Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous uh, 12 hours of Ukrainian time. We have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. And first we're going to talk about the political situation in Kyiv because according to information we have Zelensky is going to reboot the entire Ukraine, most likely after the Iskander strikes that been taking place since the beginning of the Kursk offensive. Uh, first we got report that the Ukraine's Minister of Strategic Industries, uh, as well as the Minister of Justice, uh, sub have submitted letters of resignation to the Verkhovna Rada. Later, we got additional updates. Few more people uh, uh, signed the same letters of resignation. And by the morning of the 4th of August, we have the Vice, Prim Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Strategic Industry, Minister of Justice, Minister of Ecology, Guild of the State Property, uh, signed already these letters of resignation. Furthermore, according to information we have, the Foreign Minister, Dmitry Kule Minister of Foreign Affairs Dmitry Kuleba is also going to sign the same letter. And according to information we have, uh, we have also suspended person, Chief of the Staff of the Command of Unmanned Systems Forces Roman Gladke. But as for him, as for this person, uh, his suspension uh, mainly connected with the situation with the missile strike, with two missile strikes that took place in Poltava. As for the missile strikes uh, the according to information we have uh, the during the previous night during the previous 24 hours the russians conducted massive missile strike all over the entire all over the entire territory of ukraine and the main focus took place in the western part of ukraine right in front of your screens another missile strike and according to information we have uh, this attack took place in the area of the railway station in the city of lvov some somewhere here so the russians were bombing and attacking in the main logistic hubs of the western Ukraine. Anyway, as a result of Russian attack, there are casualties in, in, uh, among civilians and we have a lot of numbers and their numbers are rising. Now let's move further about the missile strikes. Uh, during the previous 24 hours, we got additional updates from the Kursk direction. Uh, the Russians continue bombing and attacking the city of Sumy because currently this is the main logistic city that support and supply Ukraine offensive operation in the Kursk direction. And during the previous night, the Russians destroyed another warehouse and Nemo depot. The Russians destroyed another temporary position of the armored forces of Ukraine. And the Russians, as a result of reconnaissance operation, managed to discover the concentration of Ukrainian forces, significant concentration of Ukrainian forces and armored vehicles. We see that according to the Russian sources, there, there is around, there are around more than 100 soldiers and up to 20 vehicles that were concentrated exactly in this point. And the Russians, when they discovered this concentration of forces, attacked this territory with Iskander and obviously everything was destroyed. So this is very, very huge losses for the Ukrainians and the question is why the Ukrainians continue concentration concentrating their forces in the big groups a little bit further in the southern direction in the vicinity of the village uh, Marine the Russians as a result of reconnaissance operation managed to discover the movement of two Heimer systems and the Russians of course were following after these Heimer systems and when the Heimer system stopped the Russians attacked the territory with two Iskander strikes and and once again, uh, I'll remind you that we just discussed this yesterday that currently the Russians have improved their, their, their tactics. Now almost every single battalion, every single brigade has their own Iskander uh, system and the distance and the time the Russians require to make a decision is very short. And this is the reason why we started receiving so many videos of how the Russians are destroying Ukraine Heimer systems, IRST, the concentration of forces and many, many other things. And telling the truth, if we summarize the losses of Ukrainian vehicles, uh, Heimer systems, uh, ARST systems and Patriot systems since the beginning of the Kursk offensive, the Ukrainians lost much more in comparison with the entire special military operation. And uh, as for the air defense systems, according to information we have, Germany is planning to provide Ukraine additional 12 ARST anti-aircraft missile systems by the end of this year. Of course, maybe it will improve the Ukraine positions, but who knows for how long these RSTM systems can survive during the special military operation on the territory of Ukraine. Now let's move to the line of combat contact. 
According to information we have during the previous 12, 24 hours, the Russians managed to improve their positions uh, to the north of Rabotin and, and to restore control over the last territories they lost during the Ukrainian greatest counteroffensive of the summer 2023. So, by the 4th of September, we can make a conclusion that the Russians restored everything in the vicinity of Rabotina. So, the Ukrainians lost everything. And I reminded that during the Ukraine greatest counteroffensive, they lost up to 100,000 soldiers and now the Russians restored everything back. Now let's talk about the South Donetsk direction where the Russians continue their offensive operation. First let's talk about the village of Prichistovka. Today the pro-Ukrainian sources confirmed completely that the village was captured and more furthermore the village was secured. The Russian sources published also a video from the village of Prichistovka. I was waiting that during the video the Russians would show us a flag and based on this video we will adjust the map but nothing happened. The just the Russian drone that was flying above the ruins that led from the village of Prichistivka, showing the former Ukrainian positions. And also this video says that the village is already under Russian control and so this is the current situation on the ground. So for, for us it's not enough of evidence to change the color of map of, in Russian favor. We will keep the territory as contested area. Now let's talk about Tugludar itself. As you can see we have a lot of icons. Uh, the Russians uh, are clearing the territories around Tugludar, preparing the food hold before further offensive full-scale operation. So, as you can see, a lot of FPV drone attacks, a lot of Ukrainians that are running through the fields, a lot of buildings, a lot of trenches and the fortifications that were attacked by the Russian FPV drones. So, everything is about to be uh, is about to be ready and is about to begin the full-scale offensive operation in the direction of the stronghold. So, in this video, for example, we can see a number of strikes that took place uh, in the already on the territory of Ugledar in the residential part and the, some of the strikes took took place uh, in the uh, coal mine South Donbass and in the stronghold that located to the southwest of the stronghold. So some of the episodes once again were geolocated in this point, in this point and in this point. Now let's talk about changes on the ground. And pro-Ukrainian sources reported that the Russians during the previous 24 hours did enter the village of Vadyana, but the Ukrainians are saying that the Russians entered the village from the south-western direction, but not from the northeastern. So not from this part, the Russians entered the village of Vadyana, but from this part. Uh, as for the pro-Russian sources, they also uh, changed, made some changes on the ground, and the Russians are saying that during the previous 24 hours, the Russians managed to connect the coal mine south Donbas with Vadyana itself, along the railways so the territory along the railways uh, was also captured by the russians so let's wait for additional updates today we're going to receive more now let's move further to the pakrov's directions to the kurahova area the russians continue their offensive and the most important the russians are trying to move along the railways between krasnogorovka and the village of gostre uh, for these purposes the russians are trying to clear the territory along the railways by bombing and pummeling the territory with fab uh, 250 fab 500 so for now the russians are just at the beginning of this road but most likely during the next 24 hours they will try to uh, let's say increase the pressure and to break through the green defense belt and to get as close as possible to Gostra itself for the purpose to cut uh, to cut supply to cut the lines in the southern area we continue receiving updates about uh, the Ukrainian withdrawing process according to information we have the Ukrainians left the fields and the territories between Nivoysk and Krasnogorovka so a lot of territories were abandoned uh, by the uh, Ukrainians according to the Russian sources. Uh, we still haven't received confirmations that Ukrainians retreat between Karlovka and the fields to the south of Karlovka. Uh, so we are going to keep this area as contested but with, uh, with and we will save uh, the Ukraine controlled territory as well. Now let's talk about the battle for Ukraine's Girnik, Zhlana, Pirsha. And according to different mappers the Russians improved their positions in the southern direction and answered the village of Zhlana, Pirsha. I'll remind you that just yesterday we were talking that according According to pro-Russian sources, the village of Zhlana Pirsha was captured completely, but today we have some small progress. Yes, maybe the Russians answered the village, but according to different sources, haven't captured yet. And the same story about no, uh, the village of Lisevka. The Russian sources were reported that the village was captured already, but according to different mappers, the Russians just answered the northeastern part. So this small black was captured, but not the entire village.
Now let's talk about Novogrodovka uh, starting of today, starting of the 4th of uh, September of 2024. The Russian sources and Ukrainian sources began publishing updates about very heavy clashes for this landfill. So this is the last landfill that left under Ukraine control according to pro-Russian, pro-Ukrainian mappers. And now there are very heavy clashes and the Russians have already stated that already this landfill is already in the gray zone. Nobody controlled the territory, the Russians are sending wa one wave after another, the Russians understand the value of this landfill and this coal mine and if the Russians are able to take under control then Ukrainians would be forced to fall back very far to the west in direction of Dachinsky and the Russians will reach the operational space and from this foothold the Russians will be able to begin full-scale offensive operation in the northwestern part of Selidova. So this is probably the Russian goal and the Russian plan uh, to encircle Selidova from many directions. Now let's move further and let's talk about uh, the... Um, we have some updates uh, from the northern Kupin direction uh, the russian sources published another video on how they continue bombing and attacking the ukrainian logistic in this area i'll remind you that the russians got very close to the river of a skull and to the towns and cities along the river so most likely during the next few days they will try to make first attempt maybe reconnaissance and force and combo to take under control the villages like glushkovka and kalisnikovka but as for now they're just destroying the logistic trying to reduce the ukrainian possibilities as for the uh, kurs direction during the previous 24 hours we haven't received anything special just regular up, uh, updates just regular activity of either uh, of, Ru of both russian and ukraine army and that's it for the short video military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye